Welcome to another bit of Blitz action and we're going to try a bit of five minute chess now and my opponent is the Nightmare's Knight. Um, interesting little name and what opening am I going to try? Well I, I am tried a lot of King's Indian defences which is an opening I've dabbled with so let's try this line with a bit of a fianchetto and try to play in the spirit of the great Bobby Fisher. Well uh, a poor man's Bobby Fisher actually. Um, one of the best compliments I ever got was about my play and someone said Simon you remind me of a weak poor man's sheer off and I thought wow that's brilliant you're comparing me to the likes of sheer off brilliant so I was very happy very happy with that um, that definition that the person gave me um, okay well two main ideas in this position generally you can play e6 and you can play like a Benko gambit with b5 and that is the idea I'm going to go for to try to sacrifice a pawn and hopefully get some active play on this area of the board by sacrificing that pawn so let's see what happens here I've got ideas knight takes e4 now so this is very similar to like I said um, a Benko gambit now wondering what happens after queen to d2 poor man shear off that that should be my new title be very happy with that um we'll try to check out who my opponent is after this game and this is very typical this a6 and b5 idea just to try to generate some active play i'm castled my opponent is not quite castled yet he's played this h3 move which is a standard idea but also in some way this this is not a developing move okay so a key position so if i take here he goes bishop takes and then i can go knight takes knight takes queen takes bishop takes eight let's try this one so this is the most dynamic answer to simply take on b5 and now to take on e4 um with very interesting position so i thought the critical line here was if he takes on h6 and with a very intriguing position so if i take here i've got to be very careful of knight g5s that's going to be very interesting because i've bishop a6 at the end threatening mate so let me just try to work this out um i kind of feel i'm going to play it anyway i kind of like you know even though i probably shouldn't be playing it it's uh it's very tempting i have so many i mean even knight quickly into b4 is a very interesting option here um let's try that one try to coordinate all my pieces so i want to try to get my knight to b4 and my bishop to a6 so i probably should take this one now and i just want to get this knight to b4 while he can't castle i'm not too worried about an exchange of queens here so queen e2 this doesn't concern me so what's happening here i'm only one pawn down and this should be great compensation so the reason i didn't take on h6 earlier was because i was worried about knight g5 and it's very useful having my queen on this diagonal stopping my opponent from castling and if i get one more move in i'm going to have a very strong initiative so i'm just trying to find all the best squares for my pieces knight to b4 bishop to a6 would be ideal that would be very nice and I kind of feel I should have a very pleasant position here. So, okay, the idea is queen c4 is going to swap off queens. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and I don't really want to swap off queens, but if I retreat my queen, then he can castle. I mean, even the exchange of queens here should give me good play. So let, let's just go for that. I'm not too worried because his pawns are very weak. Even though he's a pawn up, his remaining pawns are targets b2 d5 these can be targeted very quickly okay he's castled that's a move i didn't really consider maybe i should have thought about that a bit more um well knight here looks very natural um let's just find the best squares again for my pieces here um i mean bishop f5 met by g4 and c4 is also interesting well let, let, let's Let's move this knight into b4. Can't can't be wrong, can it? 
And now rook e1, what do I do there? Maybe bishop f5 then is an exciting way to play. Um, okay, well I've probably just got compensation for a pawn, but no more. And I've got, I've got a stall of, uh, uh, I'm getting a little bit short of time here, so need to speed things up. It's funny I didn't consider castle and queenside. I mean, that was that was a good, good defensive move from my opponent. Okay, so my opponent's stopping um, my bishop coming to f5, so I naturally now move it to a6. Rook e1, I have knight to d3 check. And now something like doubling, just, just playing this slowly, doubling, getting my last piece into play, my rook here, looks very natural to me. Trying to get my rook to b8, threatening knight to d3 check. And again, good compensation for the pawn, but maybe no more. And this is where I've got to speed up a little bit. So let's uh, let's have a look at. Do I have time to look at my opponent? Let's see who he is. He is um, well. He's he's a mystery from Indonesia. Ivan Maximilian. I love the name Maximilian. Brilliant name. Um, doesn't sound like he's very Indonesian with a name like Ivan. I know some Ivans in my lifetime. Okay, right. So how do I how do I improve now? So he's defending well. Um, well, let's let's put my bishop here. It looks like a natural square. Still don't know what I'm doing next. Um, it's one of those positions where I'm kind of hoping something turns up, which is is not necessarily the right way to play. All my pieces on good squares, but he's defended everything. Okay, um, right. Well, I'm going to try. I have to move quickly now. This is one thing. Oh, someone said the other day on YouTube. I only seem to win by swindling um and that that is that is quite often the case so i'm going to try to play a couple of games against this guy anyway so we'll see what we can do so my idea is to go c4 and now i'm going to try to just take this pawn here i'm hoping there's nothing scary going to happen to me on this side of the board um maybe i'll just go rook a8, rook a8 straight away well let's play rook a8 okay and well he, he's he's, ch he's starting his charge now but i want to go bishop takes pawn bishop back rook here check this is my plan and okay well, let's play it quickly i think he's got to get rid of my bishop here maybe go rook to a3 um looks natural i'm gonna to try to keep control of this one i prefer my position my pawns are not separated he has three pawn islands and my pieces are quite active so okay he's separating my pawns now but i didn't want to give him a past h pawn there and his d pawn is very weak so I think it's it certainly should be a better position for me. Um, so I'm assuming he'd take and go king b1. Look at this, I'm getting my pre-moves ready. I'm learning. I'm learning how to do this blitz malarkey. And right, well, king b... Oh, he's going here. That's a bit surprising because surely now my rook does a hoover job. Let's get the vax hoover out and start munching these guys. Okay, well, this is a very good ending. As long as I don't get in trouble on the clock... I should be doing well here. My king can now come here. I didn't want to go here straight away because of a check. And obviously this should be a winning position. I mean, come on, I'm like I'm like 400 pawns up here. 400 pawns up is normally enough. Okay, well, there you go. So resign that one. Um, well, let's give him another game. So, I, I, you know, I think from now on I'll play a couple of games against my opponents. So my idea in this game now, I'm going to play d4. And I'm trying to play more aggressively. I've got this new DVD coming out on D4 very shortly. And I'm going to stick to the repertoire I recommend in that. Or, or shall I? I'll try this knight C3 move. This is this is a move where you gambit a pawn. I do recommend this in my DVD. Very interesting line. Um, if I can remember the theory. Okay, well, let's see if I can. So um, normally in these positions... When you give up the pawn, you have two pawn moves. Ah, oh, I love, I, I really enjoy these positions where you sack with this move e6. So I'm giving up two pawns again. You can see I've got a lack of respect for the pawns today. But this move e6 is very thematic. You throw this pawn into your opponent's guts and you make it hard if he takes this pawn for him to develop his bishop on f8 because he can't play e6. So it's kind of like a, a congestion move, a traffic jam move. For the sake of a pawn, I'm creating this traffic jam in his position. Um, so how should I follow this up? Well, knight to g5 looks totally logical. Knight e5 is another way to play. Let, let's go for the most aggressive option, shall we? Knight to g5. Um, 
and see how this this one turns out i don't know the theory that's the only problem maybe even knight to e4 was stronger because i had a very juicy square on um c5 so queen here can i then go well queen d5 looks like a good move now i wanted to go bishop e2 but you can even grab this pawn then i expect which is a bit annoying actually he's gone he's gone the more passive square which surprises me um okay well i'm just gonna get my last piece out because if h6 i have a check and now my bishop can come into well if i go there he's going to go bishop d5 his bishop on b7 very good piece so i'm just going to try to eliminate this one and castle rookie one and i have pressure on both sides of the board here so um let's just simply castle finish finish development and i want to just get rookie one in if he kicks my knight my knight can come to c5 so keeping the pressure up against my opponent's position um it's much easier to attack in chess than defend and you can see how my move e6 really created this traffic jam in his position okay so i, I have some very tempting moves here bishop g4 or d5 wow they both they both look they both look good to me bishop here is okay maybe i even flip this one in okay this is, requires a little bit of concentration um bishop g4 queen d6 i have bishop here but then b4 i mean this looks like it's on the verge of winning for me but as we know ver verges is not verging is not good enough let's go d5 keep keep my clamp on his position try to stop you know this pawn can now act as my traffic jam and now okay i think it's time to maybe swap a pair of rooks off here um that might give me some more targets i can i can possibly attack but he he, he wants to finish his development a couple more moves and he can develop so i need to play quickly here right okay if i let this slip somehow he's got a very solid defensive position now uh well d6 is another pawn sack line i can consider but i'm giving a lot of the guys up then aren't i and i don't see my continuation so where where what do i do here bishop g4 he takes here now and his idea is just to come here with a bishop okay um maybe my queen should be moving to a1 but then he goes bishop here always okay and i don't see how i'm gonna get in there either right this is not so easy yeah uh, okay uh right i've got an idea so i want to go bishop e3 if bishop g7 queen a1 and then maybe knight to e6 is the tactic i have so this is a way to keep my initiative alive here so okay let's see if it works i don't know if it works so i want to go here now if he takes on d5 i was going to go rook d1 maybe he can get away with that and here i had knight e6 this is my this is my point to my play and if he takes takes his bishop on b7 is now on pre because he can't swap off queens so this is my idea of playing bishop to e3 tactical idea and my knight on e6 clearly clearly a very strong piece i even have ideas knight to knight to c5 now um is a very strong move actually so this is actually this is a little problem so you probably should take and go queen c8 and then it's not okay that's a good plan so we should take and go queen c8 it's all about the race if you can get his king castle my initiative's run out of steam so um if he does that that continuation what would i play there that is certainly his best continuation because I don't think I can stop him from castling. So take some queen c8. What would I do? Well, I can play some ideas with taking and queen a3. But I am two two pawns down. And two pawns is, is uh, it's quite a lot of pawns, you know. More pieces get swapped off, of course. They're, they're um, more dangerous. Well, better his position becomes. So taking and, taking and queen c8 is something... I hope he doesn't see here um he's gone there okay very interesting i'm not sure i okay so a bit of calculation takes takes don't i have okay this looks to me like there's something very suspicious about this move but okay my bishop is very strong knight takes 
He has king f7. All right. So if queen check after knight takes, he can't go here because the knight takes here. So if knight takes queen check, king here. I want to just go rook d1. Maybe I should play rook d1 quickly. Is there nothing stronger here? Rook d1 looks like a decent move, keeping my pressure up. This check is nothing. King f7, I think. Uh, okay, rook d1. Can't, can't be a bad move. Bring in another piece into the game. If he castles, very unpleasant pin for him on the knight. And I can even consider taking at least one pawn there. Um, I have maybe actually queen a6 I missed last move. Ah, oh, queen a6 was strong, yeah? That was the move I should have played. Yeah, I know, oh, no, because no, he takes on d5. But queen a6 is a move that is um, is is coming actually here. Queen, queen to a6. That looks like a strong idea. My bishop is such a strong piece. And you can see this pawn sack line was just, uh, you know, configurator. Um, I've offered a draw. When do I offer a draw? It says it says here I've offered a draw. What? I can't remember offered a draw. Draw declined. Oh, I've declined a draw. Okay. Uh, I was going to say when did I offer a draw? Can't remember offering a draw. Um, cheeky, cheeky uh, thing. Okay. Well, I'm going to take here first. I declined a draw. Thank you. And now I'm just going to come back. And now I was hoping I had a queen a2 as well. Um, then it's weird because he has rook f6 here. Um, I want to go bishop g5. Getting very tactical. Bishop here takes check. Is it a mate there? King here check. Bishop g5. He's got a pin. Let's go bishop g5. I'm trying to overload his pieces here. So the one piece defending e6 is the rook, so I need to eliminate that rook. Getting down to the last minute here. Right, okay, so I need to take this one off. And again, this should be a very promising ending if I just go queen takes d5. Keep it simple. Rooks are better than knights. That's one thing I learned a long time ago. Any ending here is just clearly winning for me because this knight is very bad. So this, again, should, should, be, should be a very good position. Okay. Well, there we go. Um, let's let's see if he. Should we try? Should we try one more game? Should we try one more game? Maybe let's see if he wants one more game. I, I, I seem to be like flowing a little bit today, so I'm happy to give one more game. I don't think he wants to play one more game. So um, let's have a look at that game then. Let's have a look at that game, shall we? We do a little bit of analysis, and that's that's very interesting opening there. And wow, for one of the first times. When I said, oh, my new DVD on D4, I'm going to follow my variation. You can see just how spicy some of the, some of the moves might, might possibly, this DVD might become. So keep an eye on that. So keep an eye on this DVD. Okay, so this is the Queen's Games accepted. And here, after taking, I play Knight to F3. And now E3 is one move. But in my DVD, I generally go for pawn sacrifice lines where I allow my opponent to hold on to the c4 pawn. But whilst he does that, I try to come through in the center with e4. So I'm never in a rush to win my pawn back. Instead, I want to go for hacky, attacking, quick chess. And after a6, this is what I do here. So generally, when you have this pawn structure, again, this is one of the main things I recommend in my DVD. You have a combination of two hits, the right, the right hook and the left left jab and that is e5 that's the right or should i say right jab that's more of a jab move and then the left hook a4 and these two moves are key to this system where you give up the pawn and in this type of structure you have ideas of pressuring the queen side and the king side so it's a very aggressive way to play now bishop b7 i give up another pawn and here i'm two pawns down but the effect the sacrifice has had is that his bishop can't move. It takes him a long time to get his king castled. And now I have potential access to e6 for my knight, as we see in the game. But also, I have other ideas. I mean, maybe here, knight to e4, I was thinking afterwards, could have been a better move. When I can try to get this knight to c5. And look at my knights. They've got such beautiful squares they can jump into. So I'm a great believer in this position. Anyway, knight g5. And... My opponent now took one of my knights off, so maybe I shouldn't have allowed that. And now queen to d7. Surely queen to d5 was a much stronger move for my opponent here. Much better way to play. 
queen d7 and now just simple play you don't you know what the main compensation i have here is positional in nature and even when you've a couple of pawns down you often don't need to rush you take your time and this is the case here i've got a very simple plan get rid of the light square bishops because then i have ideas of taking on b5 and that's his only active piece simply castle and pressurize e6 and he's under a lot of pressure so here get rid of bishops and around here castle's very natural maybe maybe here the other move i was thinking of was bishop g4 this move looked more natural to me um i was thinking he'd go queen d6 but maybe maybe i missed a strong idea here. even something like queen f3 this could have been a much stronger way for me to play actually looking looking in hindsight something like this looks this looks very dangerous for him um potentially i can even play bishop to e6 i mean look at that that's that's a very strong move is it not oh no you can go knight d8 here i mean people have asked can i analyze the computer well i don't necessarily agree with that because this is one thing that too many people do nowadays they analyze computers and they they don't think of concepts and they just look at the computer they don't think for themselves so i like trying to think for myself and this is the best way to improve try to work things out for yourself don't just put it on that little thing and just sit back have a coffee a cigarette and let the guy work it out you know it's like having a little slave that's doing your job for you you've got to slave it yourself um bishop g4 felt natural but anyway d5 and now we attack on the other side of the board but let's have a look at this option where my opponent i believe now should have gone knight takes e6 and queen to c8 this is um looks to me a much better way to try to defend because it's just about getting castled if my opponent can get castled he should be okay and now well i was thinking i could take here and play something like queen to a3 so if he castles at least i grab that one um this maybe keeps my initiative going because my piece is coming quite quickly my rook can come in and he still has some problems but i expect this is the best way to play i think in the game in actual fact that he, he's in serious trouble after this move he can't take my bishop because the knight takes c7 check so he has to take here and now my light square bishop is an absolute beast of a piece it's such a strong piece this one and he's in all sorts of pins now and i think it's just losing i mean king f7 just looks so disgusting it can't be, it can't be a, a real a real move this one it just I, I mean it's something that you know if he has to play that this is gone wrong for him clearly and rook f6 just simply bishop g5 and all his pieces are overloaded there so that worked out quite well okay so that was a bit of five minute chess i will do another game analysis in my next video maybe tomorrow um, thank you for all your comments and keep an eye out for this new dvd from my website ginger gm you'll be able to download this it'll be 12 13 hours of d4 tuition and after you watch this dvd you'll have a very good repertoire and you'll be able to play d4 aggressively probably like me there so keep an eye out for that that'll be available in the next month or so and check out the shop all our products available for digital download and a couple of ways you can support these youtube videos is buy a dvd obviously or just like my videos and subscribe to my channel so thanks a lot for watching what watching what's watching watching i don't know what watching is but anyway thanks a lot for watching i'm not german watching watching my videos oh yes i can't speak german i don't know what that was but anyway um good stuff and i look forward to listening to your comments soon cheers bye